Okay, so I finally got around to making this video. Um, I've only got some digital gauges on this, but this is Raspexi uh, Revision 6. Uh, so I've got it mounted in between my grills here. So I'll show you how I've got it. At the moment, uh, it's set so that when I actually have the key in, it then turns on the um, Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to take the key out and I'll put it back in. That's when it starts up. So when I go to start the car, it doesn't actually cut out because it's not connected to my ignition. I'll show you how I've got it mounted. If I remove it, this is just a Pi TFT, and then I've got a um, surround that I've put um, around it to keep the sun off it. I'm going to get a um, a screen protector that is the anti-glare one and cut it so that I don't get um, any glare from out the back of my car or the light from out the back of my car. So it's a bit of a hack job here. Um, it's not perfect, but where I've mounted it is one of I think one of the most awkward places I could have chosen. So it's I've got um, the IDC header poking between my vents, and then if you have a look in here, you can see that the ribbon cable heads out the back. Uh, I don't have any black ribbon cable unfortunately, so you can see it a little bit, but the the vents on tend to hide it, I think, well enough. Yeah, so that's that, and so that um, IDC ribbon cable runs down behind my behind my dash and down to the Raspberry Pi, which I've just got in a case down here. Um, I just Velcro it up, shove it up behind my dash. So you can just clip this back on, and so I've got this set up so that because it's a ribbon cable, it's got 26 pins. I can um, make my own PCB. So if I decide to change this screen to a bigger touch screen that has HDMI or USB, I can create a PCB um, which routes the pins through the IDC cable, um, which should be should be enough 26 pins for most things nowadays. So if I insert my key, uh, I might turn off my lights in a second. Turn it off now. So if I insert the key, Raspberry Pi turns on. And if I crank the car, it won't cut out. Turn the mobilizer off. So it doesn't cut out. It takes about 30 seconds for the Raspberry Pi to turn on at the moment because I haven't got a um, build root set up or anything to try and boot it quicker. It's a bit tricky because the Pi TFT I'm using, you need to load the kernels, uh, the custom kernels from, uh, to load the Pi TFT. So, here's the digital gauge. This is the RPM one. These do look a bit better in this video, I think. I might change it so that the grey background's a little bit dimmer. Um, and because it's capacitive touch, I've got it so that when I single touch the screen, it's the same as a single mouse click, and it'll change. Uh, kilometers an hour, uh, kilowatts of power, and this is a slightly different one, which has like a, on its way to a bar gauge, I guess you could say, at the top, so I'm going to grab it. Hope my car's warmed up. So I'll take it for a drive to show the speed and the power gauge work. I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to do anything heaps powerful. Just go around the block, I think. I haven't got anything to mount my camera, so bear with me.
I got it to go green. I might have to change that a little bit. Over 150 kilowatts, I think blue, and then anywhere over 200 or 250, I think I got red. Um, these can be more customized anywhere. It also does brake horsepower too. As you'll see, it goes negative or brake kilowatts rather than brake power. So if I decide to brake quickly, it'll show me the negative. Uh, that's based on like an averaging window on the speed, so that does a bit of calculation of the weight of the car to work out the power. There's probably better ways to do that, but for the time being it seems to work okay. And touch it again and I can go back to this bar graph style one. turn off the car. I've got a turbo timer on it at the moment, but as soon as I remove the keys, um, the switch in the key barrel will turn off my Raspberry Pi. Like that. So that's revision 6 of Raspexy.